Everyone thinks Ant-Man has the coolest superpower in the MCU, shrinking down to the size of an insect while keeping your strength? That's the dream, right? Wrong. Scott Lang's first shrink in that bathtub scene isn't just terrifying because of the special effects. It's terrifying because real physics says he should have died instantly. Today, we're breaking down three fatal problems with Pym Particle technology. We'll explore the mass conservation nightmare, the biological disasters waiting inside your shrunken body, and the energy catastrophe that would cook you from the inside out. You'll get real calculations, comparisons to actual physics, and a clear picture of why this superpower is actually a death sentence. Ready to ruin your favorite size-changing superhero? Let's start with the scene everyone remembers. Ant-Man punching full-sized opponents and sending them flying across the room. The movie claims he retains his mass while shrinking, which sounds scientific, until you think about it for five seconds. Here's the problem. Conservation of mass gives us two equally deadly scenarios. If Scott's mass stays the same when he shrinks, we get a physics nightmare. If his mass changes proportionally with his size, we get a different physics nightmare. Either way, Scott Lang becomes Scott Pancake. Scenario 1. Mass stays constant. You shrink to an ant size, but you keep your 180-pound mass. Your density just increased by a factor of millions. You're now denser than most metals. The instant you shrink, you'd punch through whatever surface you're standing on like a tiny cannonball. Forget riding ants, you'd crush them into paste just by existing near them. Let's run the numbers. A normal human has a density of about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, roughly the same as water. When you shrink to an ant size while keeping your mass, your new density becomes around billions of kilograms per cubic meter. That's denser than the core of a white dwarf star. You generate your own gravitational field. The pressure alone would be catastrophic. Your body would exert roughly 2 million pounds per square inch on whatever you're touching. For comparison, that's enough pressure to turn carbon into diamond instantly. The bathtub floor wouldn't just crack, it would explode. But wait, it gets worse. At that density, you'd fall through normal matter like it wasn't even there. The electromagnetic forces that keep atoms apart in regular materials couldn't stop you. You'd sink through floors, through the Earth's crust, and keep falling until you hit something dense enough to stop you, probably somewhere near the planet's core. Scenario 2. Mass shrinks proportionally. This sounds safer until you realize what holds your body together. Your bones, muscles, and organs are held together by molecular bonds. These bonds depend on specific distances between atoms and molecules. Shrink everything proportionally, and you're not just changing size. You're fundamentally altering the physics of how your molecules interact. Your DNA would collapse. The double helix structure depends on precise spacing between base pairs. Shrink that spacing, and the hydrogen bonds that hold your genetic code together would snap like rubber bands. Your proteins would unfold, your cell membranes would rupture, and your entire biological structure would dissolve at the molecular level. Even if somehow your molecular bonds scaled perfectly, which violates everything we know about quantum mechanics, you'd still face the square cube law. Your surface area shrinks by the square of the scaling factor, but your volume shrinks by the cube. The movie tries to hand wave this with quantum mechanics and subatomic manipulation, but quantum mechanics isn't magic. It's a precise mathematical framework. The uncertainty principle, wave particle duality, and quantum field interactions all have specific rules. None of them allow for mass energy conservation violations or molecular bond restructuring on this scale. Real quantum effects at small scales would actually make things worse. You'd be bombarded by thermal fluctuations that would feel like earthquakes. Brownian motion, the random movement of particles and fluids, would toss you around like a leaf in a hurricane. The quantum vacuum itself would become a chaotic storm of virtual particles appearing and disappearing around you. The truth is, there's no physically consistent way for pin particles to work. Whether mass is conserved or not, the fundamental forces of nature would turn your shrinking experience into a very brief, very fatal physics demonstration. Remember when Ant-Man navigates through those plumbing systems in the first movie? That scene looks cool until you realize he'd suffocate, collapse, and lose consciousness long before he ever made it to the drain. Even if we ignore the mass density nightmare from chapter 1 and pretend Scott shrinks proportionally, human biology simply does not function at insect scale. The moment you leave human-sized physics, everything your cells depend on collapses at once. Here's why breathing kills you first. Humans rely on bulk airflow into lungs. Big volumes of air move quickly through large passages. Shrinks got down by a factor of 100 plus in each dimension, 
and lung volume plummets by millions, while lung surface area collapses by tens of thousands. But oxygen molecules don't shrink with you. Air doesn't become scaled for tiny people. Your shrunken chest can't pull in enough oxygen fast enough. And your alveoli wouldn't have remotely the surface area needed to support human metabolism. Real tiny creatures evolved completely different systems. Insects use tracheal tubes that deliver oxygen directly into tissues. Human lungs don't scale down. Scott would black out from hypoxia in under a minute. And the cardiovascular system? That's an even uglier failure. Human hearts pump blood through a closed network of vessels optimized for distances measured in centimeters, not micrometers. Shrink all those vessels proportionally and the volume of blood per heartbeat becomes microscopic. The heart would need to beat hundreds of times faster just to keep oxygen moving, but human cardiac tissue can't fire at insect rate frequencies. Meanwhile, blood viscosity and flow resistance stop behaving nicely at tiny scales. Even if the vessels remain technically large enough for proportionally shrunken blood cells, the pressure requirements explode. Your circulatory system wasn't designed to work like a hummingbird's engine, and it certainly wasn't built for a world where diffusion outpaces flow. Scott wouldn't just struggle, his blood supply would collapse instantly. But even if he could somehow breathe and circulate blood, his nervous system would be the next thing to fail. Neurons aren't wires. They rely on membrane potentials, ion gradients, and axon diameters. Shrink axons and dendrites, and you dramatically slow conduction velocity. Shrink synapses, and you disrupt neurotransmitter diffusion times. The entire rhythm of the brain becomes unstable. Thought slows, reflexes misfire, and coordinated movement becomes impossible. A proportionally tiny human brain doesn't work like an insect brain. It works like a system that's been taken violently out of spec. Scott wouldn't be quipping he'd be unconscious. And then there's the thermal nightmare. Humans can regulate heat at our scale because we have enough mass to store warmth and enough metabolic output to replace what we lose. Shrink that by millions and your thermal stability vanishes. Tiny animals survive by running metabolism at insane speeds and losing heat easily not retaining it. Scott's shrunken body would dump heat into the environment almost instantly. Within seconds, he'd lose body temperature faster than he could even restore it. Hypothermia, not overheating, is the invisible killer waiting for him at ant scale. So what about the chaotic micro world? Your original text said Scott would be tossed around by brownie in motion like a bowling ball in a washing machine. Great visual, wrong scale. At ant size, Brownian motion is negligible, but the moment he shrinks to microscopic or sub-microscopic sizes, like the quantum realm scenes, that analogy becomes painfully accurate. Air becomes like syrup. Molecules slam into you with chaotic randomness. Movement becomes a fight against physics even without that. At his usual on-screen size, he's already dead several times over from basic biology alone. The harsh reality is this. Human systems are tuned for human dimensions. Shrink Scott Lang dramatically and he loses respiration, circulation, neural function, thermoregulation, everything that keeps him alive. Real insects thrive at tiny scales because they evolved bodies built for that world. Scott didn't. You can't simply scale the human template down. You need to rebuild Scott's entire anatomy from the inside out, replacing lungs, heart, vessels, neurons, and metabolism with insect-grade machinery. At that point, He's not shrinking, he's transforming into a totally different organism. And since PIM particles don't rewrite anatomy, the very moment Scott shrinks, biology kills him long before physics gets the chance. Let's get into the most explosive problem of all, the energy requirements behind Ant-Man's size changes. In the MCU, Scott grows and shrinks on command like he's adjusting a thermostat. One moment he's smaller than a peanut, the next he's towering over fairies like a human skyscraper. It looks spectacular on screen, but the physics behind this would be so violent so catastrophic, so fundamentally incompatible with how matter behaves, that Scott wouldn't just die. We'd all die with him. Here's the core issue. Changing the physical size of matter requires astronomical energy, even without converting mass to pure radiation. The atoms in your body aren't held together by simple springs. Their spacing is controlled by quantum forces. Electron shells, electromagnetic repulsion, nuclear interactions. And those forces don't politely move closer together just because a superhero button says so. To compress matter by a factor of millions or expand it by a factor of tens requires pushing against the strongest forces in everyday physics. The energy demands aren't cinematic. They're apocalyptic. Let's start with shrinking. To make an 80 kilogram human occupy a volume millions of times smaller, you need to force atoms into configurations they do not occupy in the real world. You wouldn't be folding matter like 
origami. You'd be crushing electron clouds into each other. That requires energy so extreme, it's normally seen only in exotic astrophysical environments, like white dwarf interiors, where the gravitational weight of an entire star forces atoms into ultra-dense states. Replicating even a fraction of that compression artificially would require enough heat, radiation, and pressure to vaporize everything around Scott faster than any nuclear weapon ever built. And we're not talking about Ant-Man doing this once. The MCU shows him changing size, mid-jump, mid-fall, during car crashes, and sometimes multiple times in the same second. Each transformation would require a massive instantaneous energy input or output, something like detonating industrial scale explosives every time Scott taps the button. You don't get a fun whomp and a cloud of smoke. You get a lethal blast wave, incinerating temperatures and radiation that would sterilize a city block. But growing is somehow even worse. Scott doesn't just get taller, he gains the apparent mass needed to be a walking building. The movie never addresses where the mass comes from, but physics does. Material has to come from somewhere. Adding that much matter instantly would require importing enormous quantities of atoms, rearranging them into organic tissues, and integrating them flawlessly inside a living body. That's a manufacturing task beyond any science we possess, and doing it in a fraction of a second would require energy and material flows comparable to industrial foundries and biological assembly lines operating at impossibly dense, impossibly fast scales. And even if you could conjure mass from some extra-dimensional storage locker, you still face the square cube law. When Scott becomes Giant Man, his volume skyrockets by thousands but his bone strength only scales with his cross-sectional area. The result? His bones should buckle the moment he tries to stand. His heart wouldn't move blood fast enough to oxygenate tissues. His heat retention would skyrocket, cooking him from the inside out. Being giant doesn't just take energy, it's an immediate structural failure. The movie treats Giant Man like a fun party trick. In reality, it's a one-way ticket to instantaneous organ collapse. And the rapid transitions? Those are their own disaster. Expanding yourself dozens of times in size in under a second means accelerating your own tissues outward at insane speeds. Skin organs and muscles would experience forces strong enough to tear them off the skeleton. Even the air around Scott would be weaponized. Expanding rapidly into space creates shock waves, compression fronts, and bursts of superheated air. The MCU cuts away before the physics kicks in, but the real result is less fun car chase and more localized atmospheric detonation. Quantum mechanics gets thrown around as an excuse, but quantum fields don't magically solve this. If anything, they make the situation worse. Manipulating quantum vacuum to store or retrieve mass on command requires accessing energy densities that dwarf anything human technology can handle. Disturb the vacuum on that scale, and you risk catastrophic instability, the kind of thing particle physicists describe very politely as uncontrolled field collapse. Translation, you don't get Scott Lang. You get a brief, brilliant flash of radiation where Scott Lang used to be. The bottom line is simple. The energy bookkeeping behind Ant-Man's powers is more than just implausible. It's physically incompatible with the stability of matter itself. Shrinking and growing would release enough heat and pressure to annihilate everything around him. Giant Man would break under his own weight. Quantum mass storage would be indistinguishable from a weapon of mass destruction. The laws of physics demand a price for size changing, and that price is everything within miles of the user. Pym particles aren't super science, they're supernova science. If you thought the biological nightmares were bad, the energy requirements make them look like a warm-up act. Physics doesn't negotiate, and Ant-Man's transformations would turn every action scene into an extinction-level event before the credits even roll. The MCU got one thing right about Pym Particles. This technology would definitely change the world by killing its first test subject in the most spectacular way possible. Physics doesn't care about your superhero dreams, and the math is absolutely ruthless. Which death scenario sounds worse to you? The gravitational crushing? the biological meltdown, or the nuclear vaporization. Drop your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more reality checks that'll completely ruin your favorite movies.